my YouTube friends. Well, here's another Patreon video for you. I'm going to be giving you one every Friday. As a patron on the Patreon channel, A Better Life with Cat, you will get five of these videos every single week. Another bonus is that there are no advertisements on the Patreon channel and I have the ability to answer your questions and comment if I think it's appropriate. On the YouTube channel, you'll notice I just give you a little heart that lets you know that I've read your comment and I really appreciate it. I just don't have the ability to answer all of your questions on the YouTube channel. So come on over. It's only $5 a month, no advertising, and I think you'll really enjoy it. We'd love you to be part of our Patreon family. Thanks again for watching and always remember that you are beautiful. Hello patrons. Today we're talking about garages, attics, and basements those rooms that we don't even want to think about. So let's talk about them because they are your other rooms. You may not have an attic, you may not have a basement, you may not have a garage. Um, even if you just have a carport, there are things that we want to take care of or a shed um, that is, are overwhelming because out of sight, out of mind, and that's where everything goes. I know for a fact, I live in um, a town home community with one car garages and if the door, if the garages are open, the majority of the garages in my community are filled with people's junk. I am able to park my car in the garage. Very few people are. The next door neighbor actually parks a um, golf cart in their garage. But when most of the garages around here don't have cars in them, most of the garages in this neighborhood have stuff in them. Does your garage have stuff in it? Do you have a garage? How about your basement? I know that people who don't have garages in in northerly areas have basements and those are just as full as some people's garage, garages. However, not always. Some basements are finished and beautiful, TV areas, family rumpus rooms, whatever, and that's great and I hope that's what you have. But if you don't and you've got it filled to the brim, one of these rooms, a shed, a garage, a carport, hopefully not a carport, but I've seen carports like this too, um, an attic, anything that is filled to the brim, let's talk about what we're going to do to give you some peace of mind when you walk into these areas because they are necessary areas. Your garage can have some storage in it, absolutely. Your basement, your attic, and the shed, those are kind of areas designed for storage. Um, so let's get it useful. Let's get it like a pantry. Pantry's designed to store food. These are designed to store items. But the items you want to store, number one, think about what you want to store. If you moved into your house today and it was a brand new home, or you were moving in, you were buying it, you were so excited. What did you envision would be in that shed, in that carport, in that garage, in that attic, in that basement? What did you envision? Okay, so let's go back to that vision and see if we can get back to that. Um, and maybe now that you've lived here for a while, you think that that's probably incongruent with the way you're living and that's fine too, that was a pipe dream, but let's at least get it a, 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 a simple storage solution instead of a, a stash and hide area. So the first thing you want to do is think about all the things you want to keep and why you want to keep them. Okay, so think about what you have to keep and why you want to keep them. The things that you keep are things, these are the things I suggest you keep. Seasonal things, the Christmas tree and decorations, all the decorations for the seasons that you put out. Um, inside and outside. Children's things, clothes that, that the younger ones need to grow into, that the older ones have outgrown. Toys for the same reason. Um, the children's memorabilia that you're saving for them to give to them when they go away, when they move out. Their box. Keyword box. Not too many. Their little bin, their little box of memorabilia. That means you're going to have to put exquisitely chosen things for them. Now, what they do with it after you give it to them is theirs, not yours, so they can throw it away if they want to, but you've done your job, okay? That's in there. Maybe you have some other kinds of memorabilia. Maybe you have your grandpa's World War II jacket and things and you wanna keep those and you look at them from time to time and that's perfectly okay. What's not perfectly okay is things that are stored there that you've never looked at since you put them in there you have no idea what they are. They have decayed over the years. Um, there are papers in storage for years. These are things that don't belong in storage. These are things that can go, okay? 
go. Papers that are seven years old or older in the United States and other places can go, except for birth certificates, things like that. But if you're saving tax papers forever, why are you doing that? And nowadays, we don't even need to save most tax papers. Everything's online. And if you get called up in an audit, then you can print them off. It's not that hard. Okay, so the papers. Old jewelry that you're not wearing and never will wear. Old silverware that you have that you won't ever use. Your mother's pictures of friends that you don't know who they are. Those kinds of things can go. They can go. You can donate some of that stuff. You can throw some of it away. It's sad to throw away pictures for me because I come from a time when that's all you had was a picture. There was no digital. And you even saved the foggy, fuzzy ones. But now we don't need to do that anymore. So, and, and also, when you find a picture of someone and you don't know who it is, I know that someone else would probably love to have that picture, but you don't know who they are either. Throw it away. Just throw it away. So when you go through these things, here's what you're going to do. You're going to go through one box at a time. You're going to set a timer for 15 minutes. And you're going to go through the box. And you're going to be smart, not dumb. You're going to be smart and make smart decisions about what you keep in this valuable real estate. And you're going to say, yes, absolutely, I'm going to keep my Christmas tree and all these decorations that I go through every year and discard things that are broken and of no, and of no further interest to our family. We don't like those anymore, so we discard those or give them away. So we've got our Christmas and our other holiday things. For clothing, again, if the children aren't going to ever wear them and you're just saving them, maybe you'll save a piece or two of a baby things for their memorabilia box. Everything else can be donated. Um, when it's clothing, some people save clothing and forget it's even there. So when their child gets to the point where they can fit into the older sibling's clothes or the cousin's clothes or whatever you have, they don't fit in them. Another thing I want you to do is go through those clothes before you store them. If they're given to you from the cousins or the neighbor or from the older sibling, you want to go through them and get rid of anything that's stained because it'll only look worse after it's stored, anything that's torn, anything you don't like the color of, the design of, get rid of those clothes. These are clothes to, to clothe your child, and you want them to be cute, and you want them to look darling in them when they get a little bit bigger and they're proud of their bigness. So go through the clothing. Don't store old junk to go through later. Go through it right away. Do it up front, okay? The other things you want to go through are your memorabilia, and that's the hardest box to go through when you go through memorabilia. But save only the things that you really enjoy uh, looking at, and, and it means something to you. Um, don't save things like, you know, here's something that I'm guilty of. Under the sink in the kitchen, I have, not now, but I have had um, rose vases and things that I've gotten flowers in that I just save and save and save. Why do I do that? <laughs> I don't know. I never need those. And if I did ever need a vase, for, for a flower that I cut and I didn't have one, I could go next door to the Dollar Tree and get one for a dollar. So why am I doing that? Now, of course, a cut glass vase is different. You know, something beautiful that you would keep with your china and crystal. That's a crystal vase is, is different. But I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. So don't save that kind of stuff. Mason jars, things that you just don't need to save. Unless you're a canner, why are you saving your mason jars? You know, we do drink out of mason jars, and I have a few of those. And I have some smaller mason jars that I do, like my yogurt and strawberries and parfaits in in the refrigerator. Those are specific. But I'm talking about just hordes of things that you're not using. So go through your stuff one box at a time, make smart decisions, rebox them, label them. And if it's clothes or seasonal things, make a list that's on the inside, on the top when you open it so you know what's in there, you don't have to dig through. Susie's flip-flop size three, sunglasses, bathing suit size three, um, or two, or 12, or whatever it is. You know, all the stuff that's in there, put it on there. So when you open it, you could say, yep, this is the right box. This is where that bathing suit is. And her, oh, those sunglasses, I forgot, and I have the flip-flops. Oh, good, and there's even some beach towels in here, or whatever. You know, you can actually be in really good shape and really utilize what you have. Okay, so the idea is when you've got it all sorted out and relabeled, and you can see the label and you know what's inside the boxes, and you stack them accordingly, 
then you can utilize the space for something other than a trash bin, which is what it is when you've got a bunch of trash down there. So the same with your shed or whatever. You're going to pull out one box, go through it. If it's hot outside, snowing outside, raining outside, and you're working in the shed, then wait till it's clear, get a box, bring it in the house, and go through it. Maybe you need a new box or a plastic bin. Maybe that wasn't a good choice to store things in. And then bring it back to the shed when you get the next one. Okay, so that's how you do it. Eventually it'll all be done, a little at a time. These rooms are considered other rooms. The only time I would want you to work consistently in one of these other rooms is when you make it a project because it's so overwhelming to you that you can't even think to work on the other rooms of your house. That's when you would handle this as a project. Okay, I hope this was helpful. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you always remember to be beautiful because you are beautiful.